And we're back. And today is the day that we're finally going to put this tin in. So hopefully you're going to see this entire section here completely covered in white tin flowing up nicely into the ceiling. We'll see if we can get it done. Uh, I've been psyching myself out a little bit for it, but it's really not that complicated. So I have some hardware that's going to work. And I think we can finally start hanging some of these transition strips to see just exactly how this all gets assembled. We're kind of figuring it out as we go, but logic says these transition strips go first. Everything else was riveted, so these are the only things that are screwed. They had to go first. Without further ado, on we go. Let's give it a shot. These wound up being 1024 was the size machine screw that fits. So now we just gotta figure how to make it get the first one in alone is a little tricky. I think after that probably won't be so hard. Alright, I can't get it started, so I'm going to spin the bolt around just on this first one. Put the nut on the outside just to hang it, basically. And then once it's hot, I can pop it out of there and do the rest. So that'll stay there just with that one, and you see, I got nylon lock nuts, which probably I'm going to regret when tightening these from behind, but we'll get the, uh, the screw gun out and a wrench. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, but let's try and get these other ones set. You know, I thought this was weird at first, how this transition happened, but they just kind of went with what they had and I did confirm so the transition piece went here and then that first hole there goes right into there so that's just how they did it junk. Ugh. Totally stripped almost immediately. It's just garbage. It's really depressing. So, so, so friggin' junk. It's not tight. first bit up. Like always, the hardware is disappointing. That's stainless and uh, immediately stripped out. And I am not Mr. Perfect. I won't say that, but I am confident that that is not 100% my fault. They're just so soft. It's pretty pathetic. So anyway, now we're gonna do this transition strip here. 
Then we'll stick up this next one down here, which we're gonna have to cut. It's a little too long with where the bathroom wall is now. Should be pretty easy to cut, it's aluminum. So that distance right there is 81 and a quarter. So we're gonna trim that one down right now. Okay, before anybody says anything, I am aware that this sawzall is definitely not the right tool for this job, but I have it. I do not have a metal blade set up on a chop saw or a skill saw right now. And I'm hoping because this is aluminum and we have this crummy old vise that this shouldn't be that big of a deal. Maybe famous last words. I, I don't know. We're going to find out. I think we're going to be okay. So nice and slow. I'm pretty happy with that and pay no attention to that mark. That was a mistake. How'd we do? Oh yeah, like a glove. And if you haven't uh, noticed, I did not keep my word and clean like I meant to. I really got to clean, but this was consuming all of my thoughts and time was this tin and sandblasting woes, not getting the right material and so on, but it's finally happening. So let's just keep going, stay optimistic. Well, would you look at that? There's the transition strip in. We come nice and close over here. And I think, how floppy is that? Not very. I'm probably not going to do anything about that. If it vibrates down the road, we can maybe change our mind. I don't know. Do you guys think I should do an L bracket right here? I guess I should. Maybe I will. All right, that tin is just resting in there. So it's dangling down, but you can kind of see. At least the camera makes it look terrible. It looks really good in person. Maybe there's a small bow right here in this stuff already, but that's okay. I guess that's a better way of looking at it. My head, there we go. So you can see it's, it's nice. The fish eye was making it look really strange. And obviously there's a piece right here that hasn't gone up yet. I guess I could hang one just, just briefly, but, um, so not something we really thought about when we installed this ceiling measuring this out first, but that's okay. So we're gonna have to definitely trim. So we'll be tucking this underneath here and that'll hold this in and it'll be a nice seamless transition. So actually the more I was looking at it, I didn't need to trim anything off of that because there is a little bit of almost a half inch or more, maybe three quarter of an inch that slides into there. And then there's a little bit of play with bowing this material. So that's gonna be just fine. Now, if you guys remember, I didn't mount this correctly, but if you look, it's mounted correctly now. That knife, just in that really thin spot right there, and I was able to clean that up. So that's all the trimming I'm gonna have to do. So we can hang these panels now. I do remember that one of them up front here goes quite a ways past this strip. So I need to make that correct uh, before I do any cutting or anything. So I'm gonna go look at the ones I have painted and find, hopefully I labeled them, I think I did, find this front one and make sure that it hangs in with this tin here that we took down. All right, it was a struggle, but the first pieces are in. So all along there. Pretty cool. A little bead of caulking. Obviously we're gonna have to paint this white and do some caulking on these seams and tighten things up here and there. Lots of fingerprints, but overall it's pretty good. 
Um, I figured out why all these dents are here. It's because putting these back in, you have to hammer them into this channel. So they've been out before and they've been back in before and they've been dented in that process. It wasn't worth trying to pull all these dents. It just doesn't matter. It's still gonna look awesome when it's all together. So now we gotta do some fitting on these lower panels and see what that looks like. I'm super excited. Hey, the second one's in, all thanks to a Brie. We have Brie today, and she cleaned because I couldn't. It's your boy. Oh, rude. But anyway, I think that's really coming along nicely. Our shadows are screwing up the video, but it looks great. You can definitely kind of see my fish bullet. What does it look like? Still. So these side panels are almost ready. I stripped all these wires so they're ready to be hooked to these our little trailer lights and then there's going to be one original light right here which is right where Bree's going to be sitting so if we're going down the road i can flip up the lights and she can move back without turning on the crazy house lights okay so the next step is done and that was putting new leads on these overhead lights that are part of the original system. You know, we went through and snipped all these. They were almost that long to begin with, but it was this cloth coated wire. And since these are gonna be uh, jammed back in, I wanna do as little movement as I can on the old original style wire. So I'm actually fine that I had to redo this. The initial thought was that we weren't gonna use every single one, but we wound up going with such a small light. It's gonna fit in these original grommets that I think every one will make sense. Um, and I'm going to do a quick connect on this end so we can pop the light out and disconnect it if we want to maybe do every other one if it's too bright. So those are all in and wired now. I just need to go through and heat shrink all of these connectors. We got 11 of them total. So yeah, we're getting really close to hanging these next pieces of tin. On we go. All right, the first two are in. It was a total nightmare as expected. These little transition strips just do not want to line up. And so the curve of this tin is really only made by the screws. There's not much, I mean, the, the tin itself is not curved. It's all press fit in and creating that curve is a nightmare. So the reason these are all dented to heck isn't actually from passengers. I've determined it's from other mechanics that I've had to take it apart before because you cannot put these things back together without denting them. But it's old, it has character, that's okay. But definitely looks nice, it's starting to come together to the ceiling. Looks like a ceiling. Okay, I needed to take a little break from the tin. It was kind of whooping my butt. I didn't have help and uh, yeah, it's just, it's a struggle. So it's good to diversify every now and then. And the windows, which I know aren't going to be any easier, because I've had this window in and out about five times now, need to be addressed. So I want to get one at least solidified so I know my process. So we're going to do that now. So what I think I know is that this rubber, I had hoped, was going to clip in to this original channel. Just because it's like a springy foam extrusion. And it does, to an extent, you can kind of force it and then it will stay there. But I was struggling to go all the way around and have that stay. So I cleaned off a spot on the table, I'm gonna give myself a proper workspace. And also, if I can't get it to stay, I have weather stripping adhesive. But I'm gonna try first with just my clipping and maybe using the screwdriver to kind of push it in there but it was really giving me trouble the other day. So we're gonna see what we can do. Okay, now there is also a little baby flathead screw at the end, which probably isn't gonna come out. And that held in the old piece. So I'm gonna try and get that out of there, but I don't have high hopes. 100% gonna break. No question in my mind. Hey, we just got more light humid today so the lights are playing up a bit 
put a dab of PB on there. Well, now it's moving, but the screwdriver is starting to wear. Spider. Yeah, geez, we're almost we're almost out of head on this. Dang it. Okay, we're gonna ignore that screw. It is what it is. Is it working? Kinda. Is it working the way I want it to? Not really. Oh, I think I found a technique though that kind of works. I like that. That's that's working better than what I did up here. All right, well there it is. It's not sticking out as far as I wanted it to, but I did it without glue, so that's interesting. I'm gonna go test fit it in the bus again. Okay. Long end goes in first. Short end tries not to whack the tin. Push that piece of foam up. There we go. Slider in and slider down. There it is. So that's that's pretty good. That's with the rubber in play. And this rubber we couldn't get. There was just no finding something that made sense. Even like the cheap foam extrusions for like camper tops. They were just too thick for our purposes here. We couldn't we couldn't find the right dimensions. So this is going to be filled with caulking. So what I'll what I'll do is after these are threaded in, I'll run a tape bead down here and then I'll fill with caulking from the outside and we'll get a nice good line there. Um, there's also going to be caulking on the outside and I'm going to take this back out because we're going to run caulking here as well. Once again, we couldn't find what we wanted for that area, so we're going to run caulking. Smush this in there. But I want to go look at how this rubber looks on the outside. Hey, you know what? That's way better than I thought. It's, it's touching, I think. Yeah. It's, it's touching the metal, so that's awesome all the way up around. I didn't think that was gonna work so good. And then we're gonna run a bead of caulking because the original had like a, a flare that would pull the water away. This one's gonna need caulking, but that's okay. At least the rubber's there insulating the window. You know, I wish I had a piece of rubber right here. I don't. It's just gonna be a big thick piece of caulking like I talked about, but. Okay, let's pull this out. We'll run some caulking on this section right here then we can mount it, let it harden up and run caulking on the outside. So this will be our first window in. It's pretty exciting. Okay, and I'm using clear on here just because I had a bunch left over from my house project up north. Um, long term, it really doesn't matter what color this is, it should be completely hidden. Also though, if any bleeds through, I, I just don't care. That's all right. It says clear, but it's coming out white. That's funny. I mean, that is 100% white. Not even a little bit clear. It says clear right there, but it's white. I don't know if that's because of age. I have no idea, but it's funny. I'm just making a big, thick, messy bead. I don't want leakage. So I don't care what it looks like. Okay. And so you guys know I'm not crazy. 
obviously white. Like, no doubt in my mind. We'll start with this tall one. Good. We then pivot. Push up on the rubber. Good, it's in. Get this to slide, good. Pull back just a touch and slide down. That's it. And then we push. Yep, we got cocking happening, definitely. Oh yeah, there's a tiny schmear at the bottom, which is good. I wanted to see a schmear. Okay, let's put a couple screws in here. Tiny little screw, like ultra, ultra small self-tapper. And we don't need the self-tapping function on this first hole, but they need it to be this short so they don't go through and puncture the skin of the bus on the other side. And that's it, that's like barely tight and that's what holds those in. Now the other two, we're gonna have to do some flexing it looks like. And I'm pretty sure I need a longer one. So I'm gonna start on this far edge. I can see the hole. Yep, there we go. We grabbed it. Gentle, nice and gentle. Okay, now I believe that longer one did not puncture the skin of the bus. It didn't, didn't even dent it. So that's perfect. I'm gonna do the same thing in the center. Now the center one, I don't think I'm gonna catch the original hole, but that's okay. That's why we went with self-tappers. Now down here, we should check. I am lined up with my original holes. There's two of them. I don't know if it's in your shot. Yeah, just barely, right there. So that comes next, but first let's get this third one in. I'm gonna go for the middle length again because I don't remember if I finished tapping out this hole, to be honest. Looks like I did not. There it goes. But it tapped itself and that's it, it's in, okay. And we're not damaging the outside of the bus. Awesome. So test run, since I got those three in, the bottom one doesn't really matter right now. Let's go. Oh yeah, it slides. It's very tight. Very, very, very tight. Which I think is partially, this looks bent. So once I get this, these bottom screws in, I think I'll do some hammering over here. And then of course we need lubrication, but I'm not hitting my screws. Let me show you. So one, two, three. I was able to put them in the original holes. So you can see as a reminder to everybody why this is a big deal. There's one that came out. There's a brass one right there that did not. But the self-tappers do kind of work with the brass. So we are hoping that self-tappers are gonna go through. I did pre-drill these ones, so I might do that. I ground these flush so I can center punch them. Um, so I might go back and re-drill. Focus. It won't focus. Next step though is these two down here. And those came out on this particular window so I have some machine screws that are gonna be going in there. And one last thing to point out, some of these have been drilled and enlarged. So what that means is the original size was a 1032, okay? But some of them are 1224. And I think actually a good number of them are 1224. So I have here a 1224 by half inch and I have here 1032 by half inch. I'm gonna start each window assuming that it's been drilled out to 1224 because that's what I remember taking the most out of. I didn't go through and label these, it wasn't worth the time, but if this doesn't fit, we'll jump back to the 1032 and we should be fine. So let's start right here with this 1224. Yep. That did exactly what it was supposed to do. 
Do the same thing over here, I hope. Yep. And there we go. This window is installed. Minus the caulking, we're in. And since like you guys saw, I'm definitely not crazy and this is a mispack. This is white, not clear. I'm gonna go ahead and just move forward and do the outside. Should probably, should probably open up this cut a little bit on the tube and angle it, but right now I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna see what sort of result we get. I just have a straight cut, very, very small. Yeah, we're using a lot to fit in this groove here, but that's okay. I knew that was gonna happen. This is where the taping seam is. It's where we couldn't put a piece of rubber that we could not find. So we're putting a large, large, large amount of caulking in this groove to fill it up. There we go. I'm no expert at caulking, but I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm gonna clean it up with my finger. See what we get. Yep. I'm okay with that. It's not perfect, but it'll work. And we're hoping that when it comes time to dustless blast the exterior of this, it's not gonna impact this caulking too much, which it shouldn't, it's silicone caulking, so it's nice and springy, but we won't know until we try. All right, so there's that side looking pretty good. Coming down. See, this sort of stuff, once it dries, will just peel right off and it'll separate away from the main bead. Got a nice filled gap there and a nice filled gap all the way up. Excellent. Window one installed. Okay, so I'm back home editing up this video right now and I'm realizing it's getting pretty long. We're at about 30 minutes. We tackled some tin, we tackled some window installation. So I'm not gonna film much more of that in the front part of the bus because it's repetitive to what you guys have already seen. I have more panels to go in on the driver's side. I was gonna make some more cuts today, but the rain got to me. So I focused on doing this window instead. The window process is down. Finally, I understand all the quirks of it, so we know how to do our windows a little quicker now. So I'm going to get some windows in. The next time you see Mossy Bus, we're going to be bringing cabinets into this space, which is super, super exciting. I think it's really going to solidify what this floor plan is supposed to look like. So when the cabinets are in, we will then be able to do final measurements, order up our butcher block, which is what we're going to use for a countertop, and move on to other projects throughout the bus but this was something we really wanted to tackle just for our own sanity making sure that the kitchen was kind of in place um, and then moving on to the rest of the other things that we need to finish so it's almost to that point you guys should see it soon we'd still love to move in by the end of this summer we still have some time here before winter's coming it's the middle of summer right now it's july so yeah, we, we have a little time. I think once we wrap up these weird quirky things that we're dealing with now, understanding how to reinstall these windows with the non-original parts, understanding how to reinstall this tin, you know, combining it with a non-original ceiling centerpiece and not necessarily knowing what the procedure was from the factory. It's not in the book. I checked. I checked my book. It's not in there. 
So there's uh, that was a learning curve and it took some time. And prepping both of these projects, getting rubber for the windows and getting the tin painted really took a lot of time. So unfortunately, we're a month behind schedule, but the rest of the stuff that we need to do is a little less complex. We need to tile a shower. We need to build some furniture. Uh, we need to finish up some solar wiring and we need to finish up some plumbing. It's, it's all stuff we've done before in our house renovation. This weird stuff that was unique to the fact that this home is inside of a bus is what's taken a bunch of time. So anyway, that's where we're at. And I hope you guys again are enjoying watching what we're doing. We're really trying to grow the amount of people that are seeing what we're doing here with Mossy Bus. And you know, someday we're gonna be touring the country in this thing. So it'd be awesome if we could meet up with people along the way. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, helps it get out to more people. We still haven't found Jim and Karen. Hashtag find Jim and Karen. That's going to be in the description. I think that would be really cool if they still exist. So like always, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to wrap this up. I got two or three more clicks before it's edited. It'll be out to you before you know it. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.